Daily Stand-Up. I'm Denise Kwan. And I'm Mel Delgado. And today, Mel and I are going to be discussing the question, should operations and IT be part of the software design process? Well, my background is being a software developer. And so I'm very much into like knowing the whole software design process. I've worked on applications from the beginning to the end and was a big part of the software design process. And I think a lot of developers really don't have a good understanding of how the infrastructure, um, like how it runs and things about the network. And I think that that's pretty common between a lot of the developers. And so in my opinion, I think that the operations in IT should be part of the software design process with a caveat, because sometimes we don't want to have too many cooks in the kitchen. And I can see that if we include way too many people, because I think a lot of the times the process is already very complicated and everybody wants to put in their opinion on like what is best. And so I think that it'll be good for the beginning of the process where we can get the ideas and you know the their knowledge on what is needed in the software and then maybe near the end before the design is finalized then you know we can confirm that everything that was designed is in a good spot before we start going into the development phase what do you think mel um i think about that for a little bit yeah, yeah actually you know what i'm with you on that uh, the thing is, like you were saying, it we don't want the pendulum to swing too far in one direction. And I've been there. And suddenly I've 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 joined the stand-ups, right? Um, we're talking to the design of things, perhaps. Uh, and then what ends up happening is that there's so much detail being shared that you you know, we as operations, we don't know where to weigh in. And so it just becomes like one of those, you know, you're just kind of nodding your head going, uh-huh, uh-huh, right? <laughs> so so, so I think maybe a middle ground uh, is finding out or identifying where operations uh, could, could be helpful, where operations can provide input and then go from there. I, I think I do have an example of you. Oh, let's hear if an example interested. from your point of okay. view. All right. Okay. All right. So one of them was, it's kind of related to what we, uh, I think it was a, an episode or two ago, we were talking about log messages and that kind of thing. And it was from the operations perspective is, could you give me something that's, that's, that's really useful. Right. Um, and, and I was just talking to a developer recently, uh, a, a colleague of mine, a former colleague from another team that I was working on. And she brought up this issue of like, Hey, you know what, when you're putting out log messages, don't put something out there that's super obscure, which kind of went to my point two episodes ago, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, application could not make a connection with the database. Like which database? What IP address was it, right? Uh, when did that happen? You know, at so-and-so time on database number or blah, or database host name, this connection failed, mm -hmm. right? Oh, that gives me some specific information. That would have been my input from operations to developers to say, hey, could you provide me with some specificity uh, when these errors occurred? And at design time, we can say, ah, okay, our messages will be formatted with specificity. And that specificity will include the host that perhaps um, failed, you know, with the failed connection and so forth. So I, I don't know, from my perspective, I think that would be an appropriate time to do that is when it's appropriate for operations. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I was thinking more along the lines of like, especially when we're talking about, um, you know, storage or networks, you know, that's something that I really don't know much about. And I only know like the very little bit of it, where sometimes we might think that the best way is to use a certain type of storage or do it, design it a certain way, because that's what we know. But, you know, operations might have a little bit more knowledge on that since they know the infrastructure a lot more. And so those are major things that will, that may not be able to be changed once it's already been implemented. I can definitely see the logging stuff and it would be really useful for, for probably everybody's perspective, because if you as in operations are debugging and struggling, the customers are probably going to have the same thing, but that's something that can be changed like even later on, but something as complicated as like, maybe you're doing it completely wrong for storage or you there's be a better way to utilize your network 
then that's something that if later on that is pointed out to the developer, they're going to be like, I'm sorry, we cannot rip that all out. So that's that's more along the lines. And I mean, I don't disagree with you on the whole logging thing. I just think that that's not as um, that's something that can be changed later, just if there was something wrong with it. Um, I So I do think that it is important for, you know, we all have our own specialties. Now, I am obviously not doing operations because I don't have that knowledge. So why would we not get the best when we're designing everything? You know, we always try to get the best doctor or the best mechanic. Shouldn't we get it the best person to be designing for our applications? Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. And actually, uh, I, I have a story behind that one as well. So I, I remember uh, a while ago, I was working with a, develop, a development team. And this is, to your point, this is something that had happened after the fact. And the developer was was stipulating and making it a requirement to have uh, local storage. So you were talking about storage. So it mm -hmm. kind of triggered this memory that I had. So you were talking about storage. And so they wanted to have the application run on local storage. And this is, by the way, in the context of vSphere. So they wanted to have that run on a local drive, right? What was happening is that it, that works just OK in the lab. It works OK in a test environment. It did not work OK in production. In production, we typically use shared storage. And there's lots of reasons behind that. Um, uh, for performance, for uh, being able to recover from errors and so forth, being able to do uh, hot migrations or warm migrations from one host to another. So we were, you know, we were at a disadvantage with the customer right off the bat, right by just reading the specification, the customer knew. And so they knew better in a way, you know, they kind of already knew that, wait, why are, what's the justification behind using local storage? There were many limitations to that, but the developer didn't understand it at the time. But once the product was developed and then presented to the customer to say, hey, this is a requirement, the customer had something to say about it. And sometimes that was, you know, uncomfortable to mm -hmm. say the least. So, you know, we worked through it and we did what we could, but it was a very tough sort of hill to climb and, uh, you know, kind of, you know, explain why that would be the case. Uh, so it, it was a very challenging scenario because it had already been done. You know, yeah. the concrete had already been set, so to speak, right? So we had to go back and then rethink this and that kind of thing. But had we been there from the beginning, we probably would have pointed out that that's probably not the best strategy. And here's documentation. Here it is proven in the lab. Here are the advantages or whatever supporting references we needed, we could have provided. And that's just from our experiential references. We know that because as you pointed out, we're yep. that's our area. We understand that piece uh, very well. So. And I think that that's another thing that everybody on both sides, developers are, are to, I guess, not let our prides get in the way and think that we know everything. We have to accept the fact that everybody has their own positions to share their knowledge because they're the experts in it. And that's why we do have our individual jobs so that we can get together and contribute what we know and make the product the best it can be. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So with that, I think uh, we've covered a lot of good points. Um, I'm hoping that you have some good points, you the viewers, and you could let us know in the comments below. Denise, is there anything else that we need to cover? Yeah, before we end this episode, I wanted to invite everyone to develop. It is a free one day virtual summit on October 18th, and I will actually be co-hosting that. Our speakers will be sharing their knowledge on building cloud native applications, and you can register today for free at developer.ciscos.com slash develop. And check out the description below for more details. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode and see you at the next one. Mm -hmm.